you remember we saw this oscillation, no? The Brunweiser oscillation. So we discovered the fact that when we have a uh, stratified fluid, we have this oscillation where the parcel go up and down, and the, uh, stratific the uh, frequency of stratification, or the frequency of the oscillation, which is related to the, uh, to the stratification, is called Brunweiser frequency. So this very simple um, consideration can help us to explain how uh, we can see in the, on this, in the sky the, the cloud bands. Okay? So there is a nice uh, movie from, uh, this is, I think, uh, University of Nottingham, which explains this uh, phenomenon. Can you listen? Not very much. This is maximum. Is to uh, to say that we will re we will restrict to stably stratified fluids. So we will always take in com in, uh, in analysis the presence of uh, of the Brunweiser frequency. So one thing that uh, we may um, ask to ourselves is uh, how we can uh, how we can measure the importance of the stratification, okay? So it's something that uh, we already did at the beginning by, you remember we used some sort of uh, sigma dimensional number, no? which was the, the ratio between uh, um, kinetic and, exactly, and potential energy. Now the idea is to find something a little bit more, um, more specific. And for this, we analyze uh, this situation. So we have a situation where <laughs> so we have an obstacle <coughs> which has a horizontal length equal to capital L. Then we have a fluid, let's say a flow which is traveling with the velocity capital U. Uh, over a vertical distance, capital H, and then we have uh, that this flow is stratified with the Brunweiser frequency n, okay? And uh, the obstacle has a vertical, um, vertical displacement equal to delta z. So the idea is to find how the vertical divergence or convergence Will be uh, um, will be respect to the horizontal divergence or convergence, okay? Because you remember that this term here, this ratio here, for the rotating uh, for the rotational framework was equal to rho okay? Because we knew that <coughs> the scale of the vertical divergence or convergence is uh, proportional to Rosby UL. So the smaller is Rosby, the smaller is this one, up to the uh, limit that this is zero, and we have a complete uh, um, two-dimensional flow, like in the just flow. OK, so <clears throat> the time scale that will take a parcel to travel from uh, one point to the other point of the obstacle, how much is it? The time scale. So there is a parcel traveling at u and must travel along L. L by u. <coughs> okay. So another thing that I can ask is W, which is the vertical scale of, uh, um, of the velocity will be equal to what, according to you? Mm? 
dz, dz, ds. So this is the displacement divided by t capital D. OK. So <coughs> we can also say that uh, since from this, we can calculate z, which is wt. And since t is L over u, we have w L over u, right? Yes. So from this, we can say, if I write dz over h, what is dz over h? Is the ratio, yes, between the vertical displacement and the total height. So this is W L U H or W H over U L. Okay? So we have a measure of the fact that when this uh, ratio here is very small, so if delta z is much smaller than h, it means that what happened? It means that the parcel will move very, very uh, slowly, very slowly, very not so much with respect to an entire height. Okay? So if delta z is order than h, Okay, so if this term is over than, than uh, 1, so it means that delta z will be much larger. Okay? So delta z is, <laughs> is not just the... is not just the vertical displacement, the vertical scale of the obstacle, but also represent the vertical displacement of the parcel. So is there a possibility to relate this uh, ratio here as a function of n, so or the function of Brunweiser. So in order to relate this term here with the, the Brunweiser frequency, which is the oh. OK, I will have to oh, yeah. yeah. Well, just keep it like this and don't touch it. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> okay, so what is n? So we remember that n squared is minus g rho zero d rho over dz. No? So d rho over dz is the gradient of our certification. So we can <coughs> express, for example, due to the dz, we will have also some perturbation in the density field because the density field will be perturbed by uh, the change of, uh, uh, of, the, of, the of, the, of the position of our parcel. Because you might think that this parcel is moving. Then if, it is, if the environment is so stratified, it means that it will need a lot of energy to go up and to overcome the, the obstacle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the stronger is the stratification, the more difficult will be exactly, and the more energy I will need to, I mean, the parcel will need to, to, uh, to overcome the obstacle. OK, so delta rho <coughs> can be found by uh, the uh, expression of brun weiser So it will be rho 0 over g n squared. And then we have uh, delta z. <coughs> delta minus. Yes, I can. You can. I mean, there is a minus. What I can do is to take this. Okay. okay. So it's just to have an idea um, of uh, because in any case this is always uh, negative. Okay. So the, the minus is because we have to take this positive. <coughs> OK, so we can uh, substitute delta z to this expression. So we will have rho 0 g m squared w l over u. So from here we have 
an expression of delta rho which is function of n square and of this wl over u. So one thing that we can also do is to consider the pressure scale because if we are in uh, over um, uh, in the horizontal uh, dimension we will have that u dx u will um, scale as minus 1 rho 0 dx p so in this case I put I make the balance between the advection term on the li left hand side and the um, pressure gradient on the right hand side so I neglect uh, Coriolis because there is no, no rotation in this case so I don't, uh, I don't uh, uh, um, consider rotation I neglect also the friction so Ekman is much smaller than 1 and I neglect any kind of uh, temperature deriva temper time derivative with uh, of you okay? so the only uh, balance is, uh, uh, is between the advection and, um, and the pressure value so if we do the usual scale analysis, we will have u squared over L, which is P over rho <coughs> So this is the, the uh, um, balance in the horizontal. But we know that the pressure can be also, because you know that this is dynamic pressure. Okay, you know the dynamic pressure always um, satisfies the hydrostatic approximation. And we know that 0 equal to minus 1 rho 0 dz p minus rho prime g rho 0. Where we remember that this rho prime was without the prime. No, we just took out the prime. So from this, we can again make the, the, the scale analysis. And we have that P is rho, which becomes delta rho, G, H. OK? This is the delta rho in the scale of the uh, density variation. You remember that this is rho prime, so it's the perturbation. So this is the Businex, thanks to the Businex approximation. So from this, we can use this expression from for delta rho. So we have gh multiplied by rho 0 g n squared w l over u. Okay. <coughs> so my idea what is? My idea is to find an expression for this ratio. Okay? So I'm almost arrived because I need now to link u, so to find an expression for u. So from the horizontal balance, I know that, oh sorry, here I also have L, okay? So I can write here that u squared scales like p over rho zero. So P scales like this one. So I have H rho 0 n squared WL over rho 0. Huh? 
I'm going to calculate this, starting from this one. So, W, L, U, and H. Okay? And what I have here is U squared over H squared, N squared. Right? So I found exactly what I wanted. I'm a function of n. So it means that the variation, the ratio of the vertical divergence or convergence with respect to the horizontal convergence or divergence is equal to u squared over n squared h squared. <coughs> So this number here is also known as the fruit number. So the fruit number is a new number, a new dimensional number, which tells me what. So uh, fruit number, sorry? sorry okay. And u squared over m skews as p over rho naught? L. Because it's 1 rho 0, and this is the gradient. So, <coughs> so we have fruit number, which is u over n h. And then we have the Rossby number, which was u over omega n. So you can see the <coughs> very nice analogy, because both of them have a velocity scale at the numerator. And at the denominator, they have um, characteristic frequency, brun weiser frequency for the fruit number, the Coriolis frequency, the rotation frequency for the Rossby number, and then we have the vertical height for the fruit and the horizontal scale for the Rossby number. Another interesting thing is that you know, we know that the rotation effects are important when this is much smaller than one. Well, let's say order than one or even much smaller than one. So fruit number has the same characteristic. Why? Because when fruit number is much smaller than one, it means that also the fruit square will be much smaller than one. Okay? So if fruit is will be much smaller than one, it means so here, that the ratio between the vertical divergence convergence and the horizontal convergence divergence will be order than one, which is exactly well smaller or order than one. Because you remember that this is the only possibility that we have. You remember when we did the, the uh, scale analysis of the um, continuity equation? You remember that we could only have that the vertical divergence convergence can only be smaller or maximum order of the horizontal one. We cannot have that this is much larger than this one. Because otherwise, we will have uh, uh, one dimensional velocity and uh, no conservation of mass for um, GFD phenomena. But most important for our case, it means that delta Z is smaller than H. So the smaller is the fruit number, the smaller will be delta Z with respect to H. And not just, but the smaller will be this velocity U with respect to the characteristic of the stratification field. Okay? So, <coughs> for fruit number, uh, we also have a very specific, let's say, effect because uh, we can. Right with the same analogy. So if a fluid, if a flow is 
dominated by rotation, we will have that the vertical divergence of convergence will scale following the Rossby number. If a flow is dominated by stratification, this, the um, vertical divergence or convergence will scale with the fruit number square with respect to the horizontal one. <coughs> then we remember that uh, when Rossby number is much smaller than one, we had the special effect like the geostrophic flow. Okay? So with the geostrophic flow, we, we have that this is particularly zero, is, uh, well, can go to zero. So we have only two-dimensional divergence or convergence. So what is the opposite, the, the, the same effect when we have a fruit much smaller than one? So if fruit is much smaller than one, it means that this parcel here will be very, will have very, very difficult to overcome the obstacle. And the maximum effect that for the Rossby uh, number was, do you remember what was the maximum effect that we have when Rossby was very, very small? So we, we talk about the vertical rigidity no? In, for the rotational flows. So there was one specific case. If we have a bump, a Taylor columns. So Taylor columns is the uh, let's say the extreme case that we can have when we have very strong rotation. So the rotation practically dominate the flow. A similar case when we, in some sense, we cannot have that this flow here can go to the other direction, but just only have to overcome in this direction the, uh, the obstacle, okay? If the obstacle, since from, from the top, is something like this, okay? So if these are the isobath, okay, you remember, we know that the flow, the geostrophic flow, can only follow the isobath. So here is, is, the, is the same thing, but we don't call Taylor column, but we call horizontal blocking. So the blocking effect is something which is uh, extremely important, in, uh, especially in atmosphere and uh, also in weather phenomena. And it means that a parcel here practically cannot go on the other side. So if this bump is, uh, let's say, um, uh, has a closed uh, perimeter, so it means that the, the, the parcel can go like this, like this, and like this. Because the certification is so short, so strong, that the um, kinetic energy of this parcel is not enough to overcome the potential barrier, the gravitational potential barrier. But if this bump, if this uh, obstacle is, uh, let's say, ideally infinite, so it means that looking from, from the top, we have something like this. Okay, so this is our L. And we have something here and something here. So the L here is blocked and cannot pass in this area here. Okay? And this is what happened, for example, in, uh, in Italy. Uh, you know, okay, so, so we are here, okay, yes, then, and then we have mountains all here, right? We know how they are called? No, come on. What? The mountains in the northern Italy, the mountain ridge in the northern Italy. Yeah. Alps. 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 <laughs> and these, there are other one from here. Apennines. Okay. So Alps practically create a blocking. 
because there is like a topographic block that uh, avoid the air which is flowing here in the Po plain, because here we have our river, Po, and this, there is a plain here, right? So it's an area which is uh, like here, like we are upstream. And in some specific uh, uh, period, especially in winter, but also in summer, you can have a very strong stratification here. So it's very difficult for a fluid to go to uh, overcome the barrier. And so you can have a very uh, harmful condition, very high polluted area, because this is one of the most, one of the most industrial areas in Italy. And so the blocking um, uh, phenomenon is extremely important when you have valley, like in the Po, po, like in the po Valley, also in the mountains. If you have a valley here between mountains, the air that is blocked here cannot go outside because the stratification is so strong, even can be not so, so big, I mean, it can be also some hills, okay? And this is something that you can have uh, in, in the mountains in winter and have, for example, what uh, uh, is called the thermal inversion, okay? So the air which which is much colder here in the valley rather than on the mountains where there is a sun. Okay? So here you have the formation of fog and until uh, you have a sort of mixing, a turbulent mixing that mixes the air here and so destroy the stratification, this situation permits and can be very, very bad for, uh, for health. So even Yes. This strong stratification for low fluid layer. Yes, strong stratification from uh, uh, when n squared is minus g root zero d rho d z. So this is like this, or like this, or like this. So it means that you are increasing the angle. So the, the, the larger is n, the larger is the stratification. The larger is n, the larger is the stratification. The smaller, if n is equal to zero, you don't have stratification. You have zero dz equal to zero. Yes, yes, yes. That's about the fruit number. Ah, the fruit number. Sorry, I told you what is yes. so <laughs> The fruit number, yes. When the fruit number is much smaller than one, the stronger is the stratification. Like the, uh, for the Rossby number, if is Rossby number is much smaller than one, you have exactly zero column, and you have stronger effect of uh, um, uh, of the rotation. <coughs> so both of the terms, in both cases, uh, rotation and stratification, you have that uh, this very nice um, scaling of the vertical divergence or convergence with respect to the horizontal one. So one may ask, of course, what happened when we have uh, both cases, which was something that we already saw in the past. So when we have stratification and rotation, both of them. So we say that, again, we can calculate <coughs> the ratio, but now, we have one more balance to take in account, which is the horizontal balance due by the fact that we have <coughs> the balance between the Coriolis term and the um, gradient of pressure, okay? which only belongs to the rotational case. So you can see how, according to the, to the cases that we are analyzing, different terms in our equation, in our primitive equation, switch it on or off, okay? So if, and this is something that you really have to start to manage, I mean, to, to, to be custom with, because uh, when you have rotation, of <coughs> course, you have to, to think about, I have Rossby number, 
and the Rossby number comes from the scale analysis of the horizontal uh, momentum of equation, no? equation of momentum. And if I consider the basic balance, the basic equilibrium in, uh, um, in the rotation case, I will have the equilibrium between the Coriolis term and the uh, gradient of pressure. So, before we found that here. So from this, we had that pressure was rho zero n square h l w over u. <coughs> so from this, I can extract w. So W is equal to P U over rho zero N square H L. Then I have the other term is one over U. Okay, let me write one over U, and then we have H L over H. So one over U, I can extract it from the uh, balance from the horizontal balance. So I will have T U over rho zero n square H L multiplied by one over U, which is rho rho zero L over P, and then I have L over H. <coughs> so P and P can be neglected. Rho zero and rho zero can be neglected. L and L can be neglected. What I can do is to multiply again by U and divide by U. And what I obtain is U by U, which is U squared over M squared, H and H, which is H squared. And then I have omega L and u, which nothing more than the fruit number square over rho speed. Okay? <clears throat> so, we can add the third case So this is rotation, this is stratification, and in the case of rotation and stratification, rotation, that's stratification, we have that the vertical divergence and convergence scale with respect to the horizontal one thanks to, a, uh, to the ratio between the square of root number divided by the Rossby number. So, Rossby number must be smaller than 1 because you know that this is our mantra. This will be always smaller than 1, okay? Because from the continuity uh, equation, no? Fruit number much uh, smaller than 1. Also, fruit number squared over rho 0 must be smaller than 1. We cannot avoid this. <clears throat> so, we can also have that. Let me. So, if fruit number square divided by rho zero, by rho spin number is smaller than one, it means that u square m square h square must be smaller or maximum order of u omega l, right? Fruit number square 
smaller than the Rossby number. So it means that we have that u, if we fix the stratification, we fix the height scale, we fix the rotation scale, and we fix the length scale, the velocity must be maximum equal to n square h square omega o n l. <coughs> okay? So this is a maximum value for the velocity. So it means that for the case which is the most common when we have rotation and stratification, velocity must be larger than this scale here. We can do the same with L. L will be n squared, h squared, omega u. So the maximum extension will be constrained, again, by the velocity, by the rotation, by the stratification, by the, and by the height. <clears throat> and uh, again, of course, I have the third one, which is h, <coughs> which must be larger then uh, L omega u over So we have three scales, three limits for velocity and for length, horizontal length and the height scale that depends <coughs> in turn on stratification rotation and, of course, on the other parameters. So, <clears throat> we have also one possibility, which is very nice, when fruit number is order of Rossby. So, for this, we have historically Another, another uh, adimensional number, which is called Burger number, Burger, like hamburger, which is equal to Rossby over fruit square. So when Rossby and fruit are older than one, it means that, sorry, when this, um, uh, this ratio is older than one, it means that we have burger older than one. So what is uh, this number? So we have Rossby, so it's u square, omega square, n square, and fruit, which is u square, n square, h square. So it's equal to n h, omega L square. Okay? And what happens when we have that burger is older than one? We can find <coughs> a length scale which is N H over omega, which is nothing more than the natural length scale that we found at the very beginning when we consider epsilon over 1 and sigma over 1. Because if you take typical n, that at that time we didn't know, but you remember that we know we use a delta rho over rho 0 at that time. Because it came from the ratio between the um, potential energy and the kinetic energy. Um, so what did you write before L? It's uh, an arrow. <laughs> an arrow. <laughs> an arrow. <laughs> yes, I, if you don't like okay. this. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I thought it was a simple yeah, um, We have three equations. One is about rotation, one is about stratification. So what is the big one we're talking about? Burger. Burger is when you have both stratification and rotation. When you have both, since in both certification rotation, you have, you have to, to take into account the fruit number and the Rossby number. So what people does 
do is to define a new number, which is called Burger number, which takes in account both. And you will see, you will see right now, yeah. that when, oh, I can write it. <clears throat> so since burger is rho square over fn square, if is ordered than one, we have this case here. And if we consider that n is over order, let's say, 1 over 10 minutes, or as the professor said, about uh, hundreds of seconds, OK? Omega is order than 10 to the minus 4 second minus 1. And then we have for ocean and atmosphere. So we have, for example, 100 meter for the ocean and one kilometer for the atmosphere. You will see that this value here will take again 50 kilometers for the ocean and about 500 kilometers for the atmosphere. So this is when we have this burger order than 1, and we have this L equal to NH over omega. If we have burger smaller than 1, it means that the Rosby name number is smaller than the food number. Right? So it means if the Rosby number is smaller than the food number, if this is already smaller than 1, Rossby number must be even smaller. So we have that rotation dominates. If we have, on the contrary, the burger number is larger than 1, so the Rossby number is larger than the fruit number, and so we will have the opposite. So fruit number should be even smaller, and so we have that stratification dominates. Okay? So we can have different ways to see the same thing. We start from the fact that the conservation of uh, um, the continuity equation, the conservation of mass, says that the vertical divergence or convergence must be always smaller than the horizontal one. So, Coupling this with the three cases, only rotation, only stratification, stratification, rotation, we found that this vertical divergence convergence case, thanks to Rosby, fruit square, or the ratio between fruit square and Rosby. We can also see the same thing by using the Burger number. And Burger number tells us that when it is ordered than one, which means that Rosby number and fruit number are the same value, so it means that stratification and rotation compete one to the other to, to make what? To uh, make evolve this, the fluid. So the fluid, the flow, can rotate, can create, uh, I mean, the same fluid, if I don't have n square, I can have a Taylor column. If I have a strong n square, I can have a blocking. All the, let's say, all the um, uh, cases that are between the extreme, the tail column, and the horizontal blocking are when you have like a shade of gray, you have different, uh, uh, different rows of rotation and stratification. And when you are in the, let's say, in the, in the middle, you have that both are important. So you can have something like this, if you like, rotation and stratification. Here we have the tail of column. Here we have the horizontal blocking. And of course, the most of the, of the phenomena will occur here. Okay? So when we are close to the tail of column, Rosby is much smaller than 1. And we can say that omega over h is practically 0. When we have horizontal blocking, fruit is much smaller than 1. 
and again the horizontal divergence or convergence is practically tenant to zero, which means uh, in our case that delta z is <coughs> tendency tends to uh, tends to, to be zero. Okay, so looking everything by one single graph <coughs> can help again. So we put on the x-axis the value of the Rossby number, on the y-axis the value of the fruit number, and we consider number one here and number one here. So when we have here, in this area here, it means that we have Rossby number larger than one, but fruit number much smaller than one. So rotation doesn't it doesn't dominate, doesn't have any role in the flow. So we cannot just, we can, uh, we, we are not interested in considering the horizontal evolution of the flow, but just the vertical one. So the flow is influenced mostly by certification, and our uh, ratio takes the form of the fruit number squared. On the other side, if we are here, so fruit number big and Rossby number very small, we have the flow is influenced mostly by rotation. If we are in this area here, when close to the fact where fruit number is of the same order of the, of the Rossby number, we have this, uh, the third scaling, which is, which is fruit square over rho zero, and flow is influenced by both rotation and stratification. When we are far from this uh, zone here, where Omega, uh, the vertical divergence and convergence is, has the same scale of the horizontal one, so we have three-dimensional flow. Okay? So in this case, we have mostly vertical flow, stratification, okay? no horizontal flow. Here we have mostly horizontal flow, no shear, vertical rigidity, everything is like is barotropic. Of course, putting everything together, we have a three-dimensional flow. Three flow. Sorry? Why is it three-dimensional flow like? Because you have that the vertical divergence or convergence is has the same order of the horizontal one. So it means that you can have that this balance here, the horizontal convergence has the same value of the vertical one. On the other side, you, can don't, you don't have this, you have only movement in the vertical, which are related by the two cases that we had we saw yesterday, uh, Friday, so oscillation or convection, or you have only the horizontal balance, okay? Only <coughs> divergence or convergence, which of course cannot be like this, but must be like this, okay, so. <clears throat> and in the case where we have flow influenced mostly by rotation, we have Rossby much smaller than one, and fruit number over Rossby larger than Rossby, which means barrier number larger than one, okay? No, it's, it's the contrary because burger is Rossby over food, so it's here. <coughs> In the other case, we have uh, fruit much smaller than one, and the uh, fruit square over Rossby lower than Rossby. And uh, the third case, we have this uh, uh, scale for uh, the length, okay? L, which is equal of n h over omega. Okay, so this is just to find a way to describe in a very, let's say, it was the same exercise that we did when we started to work with the, uh, with the, with the rotation. <coughs> now we want to go a little bit more in depth, of course and to start to analyze 
the easiest k, well, the second k, because <coughs> as we did for the rotation, we started with the inertial oscillation, then we found uh, the geostrophic flow, then we found the barotropic flow, then we worked with the uh, Ekman layer, and then we worked with the wave, barotropic wave, no? Now we, we do a similar, let's say, story, even if a little bit short. We started Friday with the definition of the oscillation, so just one single, uh, one single um, uh, fluid column. Now let's try to uh, expand a little bit our, our world and consider a two-layer uh, stratified fl fluid with a shear. So we have uh, a channel flow <coughs> with the uh, one layer row two, which is uh, heavier, and another layer on the top row one, which is lighter. There is also a shear. So we have velocity here, u1, which is larger than velocity u2. Okay? And uh, the two um, fluid occupy half of this channel, h2, h1, which is equal to h, total h, divided by 2. So h1 equal to h2 equal to h over 2, u1 larger than u2, and rho 2 larger than rho 1. OK, so <coughs> ah, I had to make a, a question, but OK. <laughs> so <laughs> too fast. OK, so here is the center of gravity. Why? Why we have the center of gravity here? Variation density. Because the variation density. Because this fluid here is, yeah, is denser. So of course the center of gravity will uh, will stay a little bit below the uh, the half height. So what happened? We have that the shear is starting to create some uh, mixing. So we have kinetic energy which overcome the potential barrier up to the end we obtain complete mixing. So all the channel flow will have a uniform velocity and an average density rho over the entire height h. So where, where the center of gravity will be in this situation? The center. <laughs> okay, so there has been an increasing Right? So it means that we have increased the potential energy of the system. Why? Which, which is the, the, the source of this potential energy? Height? Mm. What is the energy that is going to... There is a, I mean, the energy must be conserved, right? Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy is related Velocity. to the velocity, in particular to the shear. Yeah. Because I can also intuitively think that I have two flows, and we will see, and one is faster than the other one, so it happens that I will start to transport layer of fluid at a higher velocity with respect to the other one. So I will start to create a shear. And if I have a shear, so I have something like this and something like this, I start to create vorticity. And if I create vorticity, this fluid here will go down and will go to take other parts of the fluid and so on. Good. OK, so this is the case of complete mixing. So let's try to do <coughs> and to evaluate what is this potential energy gain. And then we will see what is the uh, kinetic energy loss, because we are if we stop, okay, what, what happens if we stop the, 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 the velocity here for some reason? What we will obtain? Is the fluid able to keep the center of gravity here? If you stop the kinetic energy source, no. No. we will come back to this situation. Because the, the, the parcel, each parcel will be back to its equilibrium state. So the heavier parcel will become 
<laughs> will remember that they are heavier, and the lighter ones remember because this is like salty water with la with fresh water. Okay, so salty water will keep its own uh, properties, and so it will remain denser than uh, than the fresh water. So we can have this situation that if we switch off, we will come back to the other one. To keep this one, we must constantly uh, give kinetic energy in order to uh, overcome the potential value. OK, so the potential energy gain will be the difference between the uh, potential, and now I'm using capital U, no. <laughs> OK? <laughs> so I can do like this. No, it's okay. No, no, no. I want to, to force of myself. So potential energy, final state minus potential energy, initial state. OK, so potential energy in the final state. So I will have from 0 to capital H, rho in the final state, G, Z, DZ. <coughs> minus rho in the initial state, GZ, DZ. OK? So we have to make the difference between the potential energy final and the potential energy E at the initial state. So the potential energy at the final state, so rho f g z d z will be rho f. Rho f stands for fi final and the E initial. Okay? G G is G is G. This is potential energy. Uh, to be uh, strictly uh, precise, divided by surface. Okay. Because here we are interested only in the. <coughs> okay, so what is the uh, zero H rho G Z D Z? So we can express rho because. <coughs> rho is the final um, is the final density, okay? After the mixing, so we can express rho by finding by uh, considering the conservation of mass. So we have that mass in the first uh, in the initial state, which is equal to mass one to mass two, will be equal to the mass in the final state. So mass one will be rho one. S of let's say H1, okay, so density by volume mm -hmm. plus rho 2 S H2 equal to rho H, right? S. That's why we are not interested in surface. H1 and H2 are equal to alpha H, so we have rho 1 plus rho 2 equal to rho h, OK? So rho, the final density, is nothing more than the average of the two initial density because of the geometry that we have chosen. Of course, if we have different values of h, we will find different values. Just a, a matter of simplification. <coughs> OK. So this is 0, h. OK, I can just write it. And what I have? Rho 1 plus rho 2 divided by 2, g. And then I have h squared divided by 2. <coughs> then I need to know the potential energy in the initial state. So now I have to split. So yeah. The potential energy per surface. Per, per surface. surface. Yes. Okay. <coughs> so from zero to h half, I will have rho two 
gz dz plus from h half to h rho 1 gz dz. So this will be equal to two g h half square plus rho 1 g and then I will have h half minus h half 4 divided by 2. Okay, this is very easy and I don't want to, <laughs> to bother you too much. So at the end, when we do all the calculation, what we found is 1 over 8 rho 2 minus rho 1 g h squared. just to make <coughs> this divided by this one. So, <coughs> since for our hypothesis rho 2 is larger than rho 1, of course, this is positive. So, it's correct. I mean, from that situation to the other situation, we had a gain of potential energy because the center of gravity has been increased. <coughs> now we have to calculate the kinetic energy of the gas. Okay? One over eight. One over eight, yeah. yes. Because we have four by two and then everything else comes. So kinetic energy loss still uh, for uh, by uh, unit uh, surface unit will be similar. So from 0 to h, so now we will have rho final u final square dz uh, so let me just write it here because otherwise it's too messy. So we are interested in the loss. So we will do the kinetic energy at the beginning minus the kinetic energy at the final. Or it's the contrary of it. It's just, the, just the same, just to, since we are having a loss, what we will obtain will be something positive, okay? Otherwise, it will be negative, but just to, to, to um, take, um, how to say, um, convention on the sign. So, um, here, one word on the boosting approximation. So, you remember that for boosting rho was equal to rho zero plus rho prime, right? Yes. And <coughs> we remember that we can always neglect rho the rho prime except. Multiply by chief exactly. Which is exactly this case. Because the two and the one are exactly how much the two fluid are different from the background. So we can quite safely say that rho one will be rho zero plus rho one prime and rho two is equal to rho zero plus rho two prime. And so neglect this because here, which is one over, I mean, the, the kinetic energy is one is the ratio is the multiplication of uh, density by um, by velocity, right? So I don't have to worry about the fact that there is a gravitation. So I can quite safe uh, use rho zero everywhere. So I have rho zero u initial square dz minus one over two rho zero u final square dz. So now I can see each term. So this is from 0 to h, and this is from 0 to h. So the beginning, again, I have to split from 0 to h half, 1 half rho 0 u2 square dz plus from h half 
to h, one half, and a zero in one square, this a, <coughs> minus, how much will be the final velocity? u, exactly. How much will be u? So before, to find a rho, the final rho, we use the conservation of mass. Here we can use the conservation of momentum. So if I write rho 1, So we have from 0 to h half, rho 0, u2 dz, plus h half h, rho 0, u1 dz, this must be equal to from 0 to h, rho 0, u dz. So I'm, I'm saying this is the conservation of the momentum, OK? Mass by velocity, or obviously for surface uh, unit. So if we solve this, <coughs> we have rho 0 u2 h half plus rho 0 u1. So we have uh, 3, 4 h, no, sorry, h half equal to rho 0 u h. So rho 0, rho 0, rho 0, h, 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 and we found that u is u1 plus u2 divided by, by 2. Okay? We can also directly write the second expression. Sorry? We can also directly write the second expression. They see? The second expression, because rho naught u, u1, u2 are constant, independent with the this. Yeah. Ah, yes, of course, sure, of course. But this is, okay, currently, this is just the, just to, uh, to of, of course we can do this, sure. <laughs> we like uh, like we, we did with this one. So you can do rho uh, v u0, uh, u1, plus uh, u1, u2, plus rho1, v, uh, rho2, v2, u2, equal to rho u v. Right, and then, of course, sure, this wasn't the most general case. Sure, sure, sure. <coughs> okay, so we can put this inside the, the integral. So we have 1 half rho 0, and here we have u1 plus u2 squared 2 dz. And when we do all the calculation, what we obtain is that the oh, I can write it here. the kinetic energy loss is one eight rho zero u two minus u one square multiplied by h, which is again always positive because this is a positive. whatever is u2 and u1 this is in any case positive so we have two expression for the uh, for the uh, energy and so we can say that when <coughs> the kinetic energy so the variation of the kinetic energy is larger than the uh, gain of potential energy, I can obtain the complete mixing. Okay? So as soon as the, or in the other case, the potential energy barrier is smaller than the kinetic energy uh, uh, production, I have that uh, the mixing is complete. We have full mixing. Again, Sorry? Can you yes. So the complete mixing 
is possible when the kinetic energy loss will be larger than the potential energy gain. Because as soon as I continue to give kinetic energy, so to lose kinetic energy, and to gain potential energy, I can keep that situation stable, in equilibrium. If I switch off the kinetic energy, so I don't have any more uh, kinetic energy, so I don't have any more this one, I will obtain, again, I will stop the potential energy and I will return back to that uh, equilibrium situation. So if this is start to be zero, okay, so U2 is equal to U1, what happens is that this one goes to zero. And if this, goes, if this one goes to zero, I will come back again to this one, but with the difference that I won't have any longer the shear. Because with U1 equal to U2, I don't have the shear. So I have just two flow, two fluids, one over the other, just uh, traveling at the same velocity. That's why the shear is important, because it's the shear, the one which creates the mixing, and the one which is able to increase the center of gravity and to overcome the potential barrier. Because the potential barrier is given by this one. Of course, I can play, and if this is smaller, I will have a smaller potential barrier. So I will need a smaller shear to overcome it. So is this play, interplay between the kinetic energy loss and the potential energy gain that tells me, that helps me to keep the situation as that one, which is in complete mixing. So if this happened, sir, what about it? Because uh, for U1 is equal to U2, kinetic energy loss is zero. Yes. So that's not that's the different case from the complete mix mixing. For complete mixing, uh, you have to have it this one different from zero. What about if they are equals? If they are equals, <laughs> we will see. It. We will see. <laughs> hey, wait one moment. <coughs> but if they are equal, uh, you can have. I mean, intuitively, you can have uh, equilibrium. Is that not the case of complete mixing? It is different because uh, if you if they are equal, um, <coughs> so if they are equal, now it's better if you if you see it. Let me finish here and then we can consider what happened when they are equal. So, if this happened, it means we can also write it like potential energy gain over kinetic energy loss. <coughs> so, potential energy gain is this one. So, is 1,8 and 1,8 can be disappeared. So, I have rho 2 minus rho 1 gh over rho 0 u2 minus u1 square. Put 0 goes out. Uh, no, no, <coughs> Because h, there is one h. So for this, I have the complete mixing, OK? If I have larger than 1, so for the complete mixing, it means that the potential energy gain is always smaller than kinetic energy loss. So I'm still continuing to give, to provide the system kinetic energy in order to maintain that situation so that all the fluid uh, is complete mixing. If I have the contrary, it means that I cannot, I mean, there is not enough kinetic energy to uh, exactly to mix. But it's still possible. And what we have is the localizing. So when we have potential energy gain, which is larger than the kinetic energy loss, we still have a shear 
but the shear is not enough, stronger enough, to create, to engulf all the system. So the shear will act only here, close to the interface. So the smaller is the uh, kinetic energy loss with respect to the potential energy gain, it means the smaller will be the area which will be mixed. So I will have not a complete mixing like here, so all the flow which has rho and u, but I will have three zones. Here I will have rho 1, u1, here I have rho 2, u2, and here I will have what we call mixing zone. So when this is uh, equal to 1, exactly is this one. Because you don't have mixing, and you keep your system by, uh, by having this uh, situation exactly fixed. So there is an instantaneous change of loss and gain, of loss and gain, and so you, you do not have any kind of, uh, uh, of transformation. Is it from the conservation of mechanical energy? Sorry? Uh, from the conservation yes, of mechanical yes. energy, the, the two systems are always being in equilibrium. Mm -hmm. For example, loss in kinetic energy and gain in potential energy. So for a complete mixing here, we must have the kinetic energy lost is always greater than the potential energy. So, so what's the source for further that energy? What's the source? Yeah. For? For uh, that standard energy loss is curtain. This, this, the source is the shear. So you have that this is different from zero, positive, which is always positive, when u2 is different from u1. So you, can, you must have only, I mean, only with the shear, you can have a kinetic energy loss. If you have these two equal, you cannot do nothing. So, because there is no transfer of energy between the two fluid. <coughs> so the two layer will remain uh, constantly uniformly stratified. So this is the, 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 only, the only possible source. Of course, it's an exter external source. It's not something which is inside. So we might consider this, for example, as the wind, and this as the sea. Or these are two layers of atmosphere. When we have winds which, goes, which go in to at two different velocities, or even at two different directions. And when you have that these terms are equal, you practically have conservation of energy, and uh, you have that there is a um, constant transformation of kinetic and potential kinetic energy to potential energy. No Sorry, there is no mixing That's because if you have the first, it, it, it's a little bit difficult. I mean, we are m making very uh, general consideration, like using only scale analysis practically. Okay. Yes, I think it's one of the things. When kinetic energy versus a quarter of potential energy came, it's what you have there, there's no mixing. <coughs> okay. Uh, okay, let's now study what, what happened with the localized mixing just give me a couple of, of tell me uh, allow me a couple of, of minutes to, to finish this so we are in this situation okay so we are in this situation where we have a mixing zone so the mixing is localized so the potential energy is so strong the potential value is so strong that uh, it not doesn't allow the the fluid to be completely mixed Okay, so this is exactly what happened. If you start by having uh, a system which is uh, um, 
in quiet. And then you start, it is, you have row one and row two, okay, fix it. Then you have, you started to add the, a shear. So the shear will start to create a mixing here. So the more you give the shear, the more this widen. will will widen, okay, and will constant will engulf will uh, uh, occupy all the all the system uh, volume. Now we are interested to this one, <coughs> to the the area the the system uh, of the two layer flow with the uh, localized mixing. So what we say there is that a two-layer shear flow is always unstable. Why? Because in this case, and uh, I won't do the mathematical uh, derivation. You can find it not on Kushman, but on <laughs> Kundu. Oh, yes. You know it? Yes, yes. It's uh, 12. Six. It's very very nice book also the one. So we have that situation there, and uh, this is what happened with the time. Okay, so at the beginning we have this small perturbation traveling in the interface between the two fluids. Then with time the perturbation start to grow up to reach a certain situation when we have this. Um, pattern here, which are called rolls. Okay, rolls, like spring rolls. <laughs> <coughs> so this is also known as kelvin helmholtz instability. Okay, so we have the initial perturbation of wave number k and temporal evolution of the unstable perturbation. So let's see how this unstable perturbation travel within. So. Um, so the instability, so a two-layer flow is unstable when so rho two square minus rho one square multiplied by g is smaller than rho one rho two k u one minus u two square. So this is a quite similar form to the one that we, we, we found before, okay? So the, but it's not exactly the one. <laughs> because to reach this one, it's a little bit more tricky. That's why I don't want to, to go in detail. What is K? K is the wave number. Okay. <clears throat> so if we use the Goosey next approximation again, so we have this is rho 2 plus rho 1 multiplied by rho 2 minus rho 1 g divided uh, less than rho 1 rho 2 k u1 minus rho two, uh, u2 two square. <coughs> so be careful here that we are multiplying density variation by uh, gravity, uh, gravitational acceleration. So if we consider rho 2 or the rho 1 or the rho 0, <clears throat> so what we obtain here is that this is 2 rho 0, this we cannot, of course, substitute, and this will be rho 0 squared. So we have 2 rho 2 minus rho 1 g smaller than rho 0 k u1 minus u2 squared. So, <clears throat> Since we have, it means that if we make a, 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 a analysis, a spectral analysis, or a stability analysis, so we may allow any kind of uh, wave perturbating the, uh, the interface. So for any possible wavelength L, which is equal to 2 pi over k, we know that when k is larger than 2 rho 1 minus rho 2 g divided by rho 0 u1 minus rho u2 squared,
<coughs> so when this is when this k is larger than this term, we have instability. Okay? So what does it mean instability? It means that the perturbation will grow within the, the, the fluid, the flow, sorry, the two-layer flow. <coughs> because we know that two-layer flow is unstable when we have this. When we have this, it means that we have k larger than this one. So there will be at least one lambda which will be based on this wave number. Okay, so there will be any possible, so if we have this, we know that k is equal to 2 pi over lambda, so it means that lambda will be smaller than uh, rho 0 u1 minus u2 squared over rho 1 minus u2 g, and then there are all, of course also the other term, I think it's pi here. So, it means there is at least one short wavelength <coughs> to create instability in, the, uh, in our two-layer flu flow. So, experiment say that the uh, scale of the length of the uh, wavelength is order of the scale of uh, the uh, uh, rows. So any rows if we <coughs> so if this if the scale of lambda, this is the scale of rows, we will call it delta H. Okay? So it means that <coughs> delta H will have the scale of the lambda maximum which is pi rho 0 u1 minus u2 square over rho 1 minus rho 2 g. So this is the scale for the mixing zone. And if you remember what we said before, even if we have a pi here, <coughs> so we said complete mixing and localized mixing when it was like delta rho gh over rho zero delta u square smaller than 1, and yeah. delta rho gh over rho 0 delta u squared larger than 1. <coughs> so this means that we have that the complete mixing is when h the total height of the system is smaller than rho 0 delta u, u1 minus u2 squared divided by rho 1 minus rho 2 gh. And the localized mixing will be when h is larger than the center. Okay? Sorry? Because here... No, H is less than, you still have H and the denominator. Ah, sorry. <laughs> yes. But this is exactly the scale of delta H. So, 
we obtained this uh, result by considering a closed system, okay? By just considering a two-layer fluid <coughs> with uh, barriers below, at the bottom and at the top. This term here, in, in, on the contrary, is considered, I mean, the, the, the mathematical um, derivation is considered when we have semi-infinite plane on the top and on the bottom. So, of course, the two mathematical derivations are slightly different. But if we just have a look on the uh, area of the interface, we can say that Complete mixing is when h is smaller than delta h. So it means that delta h, which is the mixing zone, which is the area which is related to the maximum wavelength, has completely overcome the value of h. On the other side, we have the lo localized mixing when h is uh, uh, greater than delta h. Okay, which is exactly what we expect. H delta H. If this increase until that to come to include obviously also H, we have the complete mix. And uh, yes, so this is the. Uh, some picture from uh, from the experiment and uh, what happened here when we move from this to this we have two mechanisms which are rolling and breaking so rolling is this mechanism and breaking is when we start to have three-dimensional uh, system three-dimensional uh, motions because you have of course shear like this, vorticity going in this direction and creating uh, three-dimensional motion. And we have turbulence mixing. So this is the first example of turbulent mixing, of how turbulent mix, mixing acts in uh, the Kelvin-Helmholtz um, instability, okay? Which you may see in a very nice uh, picture taken here in the Sahara Desert and here in the Algerian sky. Okay. So it's, try to look, I mean, not <laughs> when it's cloudy, but uh, in some uh, particular condition, you can, you can look at this uh, kelvin elmont interview, which are different from the uh, cloud bands that we, we saw before from the, from the video, okay? So there are two different mechanisms. One is cloud band, related just to the fact that we have room by the frequency and the mountain, so flow and then perturbation in a stat uh, stratified flow. Here we have two different uh, velocities, so a, sh a, velo a flow sh shear flow, which create the uh, mixing in a very localized area, okay, near the interface. 